Hey cookie friends, Julia here. I hope you're having a wonderful Friday. I'm here taking a little break from making 3D wedding cake cookies to talk to you about my cookie competition. In fact, actually to answer all of your lingering questions and hopefully to push any of you who are on the fence off it to compete. Before I get started, I want to make sure I'm broadcasting properly and you can all see me. I'm flying solo today here in my kitchen, so it's a little harder for me to manage the controls and talk and do all of that stuff at the same time. So um, if somebody wants to post a comment, I'd love to see it. That way I'm sure that I am talking to you all. I don't see any yet. At any rate, I do have some thumbs ups and, and little heart signs, so thank you very much for that. Um, at any rate, let me let me talk a little bit about the competition, where it's taking place this year and all of that. Then I'm going to pause for questions. I'm hoping that your questions will exhaust everything I had planned to say today. If they do not, I do have a, a few important things that I want everyone to hear about the competition. So I'll continue on to some planned thoughts if questions are lean. Uh, first of all, I'm really excited because the competition is back in person after two false starts. Uh, the last two years we went online uh, due to COVID. That takes the Cake Show, which is our host Cake Show, where the competition is held, um, closed those two years. So we were forced online. We are so happy to be back in person, able to give people big hugs and kisses. So the competition is taking place, as I said, at That Takes the Cake. That's in Round Rock, Texas from March 31st to April 1st. So competition entries are due on the 31st up until, I believe, 9.30 or 10 o'clock on the 1st. We begin judging on April 1st, Saturday at 10 a.m. The theme you can see in the upper right-hand corner is international holidays this year. I think that's going to um, allow us to really express our cultural creativity. We always have a theme that guides our competitions. And I usually draw on the theme of the host show uh, because it's always so darn good. And I think this one is especially great and lends itself well to creative thinking. This same theme will apply to both our 2D and 3D cookie categories. So while on that subject, let me talk a little bit about how our competition is structured. There are two categories, 2D and 3D, and within each of those categories, we have two skill level classifications. This is new in the last year. We used to have one big open category where everybody of every skill level jumped on board. But as we've grown, we decided it was fairer to everyone involved to break it into at least two skill level classifications. And that's what we currently have. We have a beginner intermediate class as well as an advanced master. So within both 2D and 3D, you'll have those skill levels. This is also great because it allows people that are new to decorating to compete as well. And there are real benefits to competing, particularly if you're new. Um, and that's what I want to talk about on this next slide. And then we'll open it up to questions. And that next slide is why compete. As I said, I think there are real advantages to beginners when it comes to competing. And that's because competing isn't really about winning in, in the mind of this competition organizer. It's really about personal growth and learning, and oftentimes the beginners have the most to learn. Uh, this environment, the com competition environment, is particularly conducive to learning because you can work at your own pace up until the competition, creating whatever it is you like. You're not constrained by customers. You're not constrained necessarily by time. time. So you, the world is yours in this month and a half up to competition to create within that theme as you like. Now, of course, we have some wonderful prizes. I think they're really the best in the cookie business, and we'll talk about those later. So those shouldn't be overlooked. If you happen to win, awesome. But really what we're looking for as you come out of this competition is to challenge yourself to do something a little new and different that you wouldn't do necessarily in the normal course of the day, and also to take uh, learning from the process. Um, this process is structured such that learning is... Um, Plentiful. We have some awesome judges, and their primary role isn't just to score your entries. It's really to provide you with meaningful feedback, both in terms of what you did exceedingly well and also areas where you could improve. I encourage everybody to gather that feedback at the end of the competition because that's where um, you're really going to find that your skills um, improve by internalizing that feedback and applying it to the next project. So that's what I believe competition is all about. And my judges also subscribe to that notion as well. 
Um, let me pause here before I move on to some of my more organized thoughts and just see if you all have any questions. I'd love to hear from you. Talking in a vacuum here is um, not so fun. Okay, so I've got a few hellos. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can post those so people can see them. This is a new little feature of this, this uh, software I'm working with. So we're just gonna check it out. Hi, Deb. Hi, Eva. Now, um, questions, anybody? Who all out there is competing? Let me look at that. Anybody listening, competing in the competition? Okay, so Jennifer here asked a great question. Can you send the piece and not attend the show? You know, I've never had that question before, and I don't know that anybody's ever done it because people are generally um, pretty sensitive to how the piece looks when it presents itself on the table. Um, they want to make sure it presents at its best, and so many things can happen in transit. So um, I would say you could certainly send it with somebody else, particularly if you're driving it, and that person could set up the, set up the piece. But I would not recommend sending it solo and expecting someone to receive it and set it up for you. It's really the entrance responsibility to make sure it gets on the table and it looks its best. I wish we could do that, but in this in-person format, um, that's not so possible. Um, but good question. But if you have a friend who's, who's willing to schlep it for you and set it up, I think that's fine. Okay, so Kyla here, who's that takes the cake organizer. Hi, Kyla. She said she's had, occasionally had friends drop off pieces. And I think the friends thing is um, the watchword there. Somebody trusted who you know is going to set it up well on your behalf is, is important. And make sure it just gets there. Okay. Um, other questions? Ah, okay. So Jennifer said her daughter's expecting and that's why she can't attend. Yeah, well, I would recommend definitely then trying to find somebody entrusted who could drop it off for you and get it on the table. We just want to make sure it gets in the right place and presents its best. But congratulations to your daughter. That's exciting news. Okay, I've got some good questions here. So I'm going to pause and look at those. And if I'm looking off into the air, it's because I'm looking at my screen trying to read the questions at the same time. So Renee asked, are the competition pieces placed on, de on a decorated board or just a simple board? You know, that's entirely up to you. I will say that some people choose to put their competition pieces on something that's cookie. The more cookie that the judges see, the better. They love to see an all-cookie piece. Of course, sometimes you will hit some structural cons constraints or transport constraints that will uh, prevent you from putting your piece on something edible as well, in which case a board is fine. I would say, um, again, decorated or otherwise, if you do choose to go the inedible route, um, we're really interested in the cookie structure itself or the cookie arrangement itself. So unless that backboard really plays into your overall design, I would leave it simple. However, if you can integrate it in a creative way and integrate it in a creative way with icing and cookies, all the better. So that's neither a yes nor, nor no answer, but uh, hopefully gives you some latitude in terms of your preparation. We don't want the backboard to be distracting is the bottom line. We want it to integrate with your piece and ideally if it's edible, all the better. Okay, so Eric says, hi, I say hi back. Does there have to be a backdrop behind the 3D design? Kristen, good question. In fact, uh, I would say no, because you'll see, I encourage everyone if you haven't been to the That Takes the Cake site and looked under the Julia Usher competition area, that's where all the rules are. They're spelled out in fine detail. I encourage you to read them all even before you get started. One of the key criteria for the 3D category is that the piece view well from all angles. We are known to ding pieces where they're really decorated from the front, but the back is just plain. So if you're gonna have a backdrop behind it, chances are you're gonna be obstructing the view of the back. We, we really do prefer to see things in full 350. That's the beauty of a 3D cookie. Now, that doesn't mean the back has to be as decorated as the front, but we definitely don't wanna see an unfinished back and, or a backdrop obstructing it, if that makes sense. Okay, let's see if there are other questions. Thank you. 
Oh, great. Kelly posted the link to the rules. I really appreciate it because um, things are quite spelled out there. But even as spelled out as rules can be, they are sometimes ambiguous. So I appreciate the need for questions. We've gotten some good questions here today. I'm going to scroll on down any more. Um, otherwise, I'll proceed with some planned thoughts. And when I'm done with those, we can continue to take questions. I'll keep my comment screen open to the extent that I can. My screen here is pretty jammed with stuff. So if I see things coming in, I'll take those questions. I'm not sure how to get, oh, there we go. I wasn't sure how to get rid of a comment once I answered it, but now I know. Okay, so we talked about why competing. So let's talk about how we evaluate the entries. I think, as I said, that we're one of the most thoughtful, maybe I didn't say this already. I think this competition is one of the more thoughtful and carefully considered competitions. And part of the reason is we've got some exceptional judges. Many of these judges have been on my team for a number of years. Um, they were selected because they bring to the table a broad range of skills. Not all of us are jacks of all trade. In fact, few of us are. So it's really important on your judging team to have a good composition of people that represent the full range of techniques that could possibly be evaluated. So for instance, we have Sandy Beltran, who's really famous for her amazingly lifelike painting. We've got Stephanie Kappel of the Hungry Hipp Hippopotamus, who's known for her fine precision piping, I like to call it, really impeccable pipe piping work. Lara Saperiti joined the judging team last year from Italy. She brings an international component and also knowledge about how competitions are operated in other parts of the world. She's judged numerous competitions all over, quite skillful in painting and piping as well. And then this year, new to our team, I'm quite excited about, is Beatrice Mueller of Cakes by Beatrice and also Gin Ginger Nears. You probably know her from the Food Network where she's competed in gingerbread competitions. Uh, she is our 3D expert in terms of structure, soundness of structure, and um, interest of structure. So we're really excited to have her on board. On to how we evaluate. I'll talk a little bit about the judging process and then I'll pause more for questions. The judging process is blind. So when you come in with your entry, it's going to be numbered. It's going to, you should drop it off with a little packet of information about it. Again, read those rules because we do require in-process photos of the piece, as well as a description of how you interpreted the theme, as well as a description of any unique techniques or tools or mediums that you use. In particular, if you've used a medium that the judges might deem as inedible, which is not allowed, we would like you to point it out and indicate that it's edible. You know, the, we don't want you using luster dusts that are non-toxic, that's not edible. So again, read the rules. If there's anything that we might construe as otherwise, it's best to point out that you have abided by the rules. Um, the judging won't be blind, as I said, so you'll come in, you'll get a number, you'll have this folder, that folder will also be numbered and they'll be paired together and put on the judging table. The judges will come through not knowing who you are and we like to judge blind so that we don't bring any inherent bias into the process. So you should not put any identifying information on your materials. Don't put your fax number or your business name or your card in your folder. Please leave all that information out. Uh, our process here on the cookie side is a two-step process. All the judges um, will first independently evaluate the pieces. Uh, we like that because oftentimes in a group situation, one person or another can have a louder voice than the next person. And we want to make sure we, that every judge's opinion and voice is heard. We've got a really skilled team. We come at it from all angles, and we want to make sure that no one gets overlooked. So each judge will go through each entry, rate it off some pre rate it on several predefined criteria. Then we'll bring those scores together, tally them, and then evaluate them as a group. Um, that allows me, as the head judge, to look for differences of opinion, where say Stephanie might have disagreed from Sandy, and have those guys talk it out. We want to make sure that everybody recognizes the same thing in each piece. Ultimately and that um, any close calls, any differences of opinion get evaluated and addressed. Um, those predefined criteria that I mentioned are also listed on the website, so I encourage you to read them. That will give you a good sense of what the judges look for. In the case of the 2D category, which are flat cookies, a collection of flat cookies or even a single flat cookie, there are seven criteria with the 3D category there are nine criteria because we additionally look at things like 
as I said before, how the piece views from all angles, what's its overall scale and proportion, and those sorts of things. So in total, if you're entering the 2D category, you have a maximum potential of 70 points. In the case of 3D, you'll have a maximum potential of 90. We do have some predefined point deductions if you do break rules. There are rules, and, and oftentimes, particularly if you're a newcomer to competition, it's easy to overlook some of those. So we don't like to disqualify people for breaking a rule. We'd much rather point out in our feedback, hey, you know, you missed that rule. Next time, be careful about it. But we will systematically deduct points for that. We make sure we deduct the same number of points for each person who violates that rule to keep the process um, as fair as possible. So those point deductions are established up front. For instance, if you use an, an inedible material, that would be a point deduction. Um, we um, frown upon inedible supports in the 3D category. We'd rather you use edible supports. If you use an inedible support in the 3D category, we ask that it be visible so that if theoretically someone were eating the piece, they would see that inedible part and be able to pull it out. So for a prime example of that might be a cookie pop sticking out of the construction. We could see the stick on it, pull it out, and no one would be um, at risk for eating that inedible part. Um, as I said early on, feedback is really why we compete. It's the most important part of the process, and our feedback is exhaustive in this competition. It's working a little bit differently this year, so I want to pause here and explain this. Uh, while online, anyone the last two years, we delivered feedback to anyone who requested it. We had a large number of online entrants. We had people coming from all over the world, so it wasn't feasible for us to write detailed feedback for everyone. Our feedback looks as follows. You'll get your set of scores across the criteria and you'll get them compared to the average of everybody else in your category. So you'll know where you did exceedingly well, where you might have room for improvement. But that's not all. In addition to that, you're going to get at least a page of feedback that's a compilation of all the judges' thoughts about those areas, pointing to particular things in your entry that were really strong, as well as looking at those areas within the entry that were really not as strong. And oftentimes they will also lend suggestive tips for how to improve that. So for instance, if there are tracks or, you know, roughness to your icing, that would be an icing consistency issue. And we'd point that out. So um, that kind of feedback is provided. In the past, when we were in person, everybody got it. Uh, but each feedback form takes us probably an hour to an hour and a half to prepare. It's, it's that serious. So we take this part of the process um, most seriously. So what we're doing this year in person is we're going to ask people to request feedback as well. So on that entry form that you bring in, you know, please check the box. I want my feedback at the end of the process. And additionally, email me. It wouldn't hurt to make sure that I know that you want it in advance. Then what will happen is we will go back after the competition ha winners have been announced and people have been awarded at the show. I'm going to take two weeks to synthesize all the feedback and write it up over the, a period of time just because again it takes that long and it's really impossible to do it justice I have found if we try to do it late Saturday night before the Sunday awards ceremony at the show so that's our new process again everyone who wants feedback will get it but you do need to um, request it so with that let me pause and see if there are any other questions about judges judging process how all of that works again I it sounds pretty serious we try to be fair um, throughout the process, um, but it, don't take it too seriously. I mean, I'm, I, I, want, I want you to take the rules seriously if you want to win, but the, again, the most important thing is coming out of this with some really useful, instructive feedback. Okay, so back to comments. Okay, dokie. Let me scroll back up because I missed some of these. As I'm talking, the comments get hidden. We have some remarks on the judges. Yes, she is. Our judge Beatrice is quite amazing. We're really lucky to have her skill set on the team. I do 3D. She does 3D of a different type. So um, we all come at it, as I said, it from a slightly different angle. Okay, Kristen's got a question. I haven't read it yet, so we'll just put it out there for everybody to read it at the same time. For the 3D design, the rule was that the inedible piece, cookie, blah, 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 has to be visible and easily removed. Um, that's the rule. However, the rule is a little bit more than that. The rule says that we would prefer not having any inedible stuff. We're not eating these cookies as we evaluate them. This is purely a decorating contest, but I do feel that 
a cookie competition or a cake competition, I think it's got to be edible material. That's what we're, that's the medium we're competing in. So I, we don't want people loading their pieces with inedible stuff because it kind of gives an unfair advantage. So I would say first and foremost, if you can think about how to support your project without using any inedible supports, then do that. And there are ways to do that because people did that in a remarkable way in last year's competition. We had some gravity defying pieces that were literally like tipping over, but weren't, and they weren't, they weren't, um, internally supported with dowels or anything else. Um, so they had some creative gluing processes that they used with royal icing. But anyway, if you find that it's impossible in the 3D category to get away um, with no inedible supports, then they are allowed. However, in the spirit of hypothetically, if you were to eat this, would you want a stick in the middle of your piece that somebody could chomp into and not see? Probably not. So if you're gonna use an inedible support, which we discourage, it needs to be very visible. It needs to be something on the outside that the judges can say, hey, that's a stick, but it can be easily removed, so that's fine. But if it's a stick embedded in the middle that we can't see, and uh, you know, that's, that's probably gonna get a point deduction. Um, so um, hopefully that answers that question. Oh, yeah, okay, so <laughs> I answered it anyway, so I answered that a second time. But it doesn't hurt to clarify that one because that's a little confusing for almost everybody. So any other questions? Any questions about 3D versus 2D? Let me pause on that a little bit because sometimes that generates questions as well. It certainly generates questions when people post to my site Cookie Connection because people are posting what I wouldn't consider a 3D cookie as a 3D cookie. So in our competition, a 3D cookie is a construction. It, it's comprised of a minimum of 12 separate cookie pieces put together into some shape, freestanding shape. So it is constructed by definition. Um, it is not a flat cookie, you know, laying down that has dimensional fondant or royal icing pieces or stuff stuck out of it. It's got to be a multi-cookie composition. Anything that has dimensional icing on it, I would put in the 2D category. Okay, I'm going to check questions one more time, and then I'm going to proceed with some other thoughts. No more questions. Okay, so let's move forward. I think I've covered the judging process. Um, I want to talk a little bit, kind of open-ended, what sets an entry apart. Every judge looks for slightly different things, but I think, in general, we're all looking for that wow factor. That technique, that structure, that design interpretation or theme interpretation that we didn't expect. So the kinds of things that are more ho-hum to us are theme interpretations that are particularly predictable or not personal. To the extent that you can weave a story around your piece and make it uniquely yours, um, that helps as it relates to theme. Of course, we are looking for technical excellence, cleanliness of design, all of those things that you'll see listed in the judging criteria. And when all of those things are done in concert with having a really great concept and theme interpretation, you know, that's kind of the wow factor. And occasionally we will find people will surprise us with a technique that we have not seen done before. Um, that kind of thing should be pointed out if it's not evident to us so that we can really explore it. Things to avoid, conversely, there are some pitfalls that um, people tend to fall into. And I would say probably one of the biggest is looking at that list of criteria and saying, oh my God, I've got to hit all these criteria. I've got to do absolutely everything. I've got to use every single technique in this piece. And that's awesome if you can do that and then and meld them in a beautiful, cohesive way. But more often than not, that's really difficult to do. So I would say the judges much prefer you to maybe not do every single technique, but show a wide range of techniques, but do them well. You know, it's, it's worse to do lots of stuff sort of haphazardly or half well than it is to concentrate on fewer and really build a cohesive piece. Um, the other thing to avoid in your entry is to avoid breaking rules. So, uh, you know, I'll go back because it's just a shame when people put so much work into stuff to have to deduct points because something wasn't read. So go back, read the rules. If after this session you have questions, you know, by all means, I'm here by email 24-7. So just email me sweetlife at juliausher.com 
and I'll clarify rules questions. I love it when people put the questions on my blog. I have um, an opening competition post on Cookie Connection. I love when people post questions there because I'll answer them for everybody and everybody gets the benefit of the same answer. But if that's not possible, you can, of course, email me. Um, so one of the primary rules to avoid breaking is in edible elements, particularly in 2D, they're not allowed at all. In 3D, again, they're only allowed in a very particular way as internal supports that are visible and easily pulled off the project. We do not allow any copyrighted images or art in our competition. We want to see your creativity. We're not interested in seeing how you replicate somebody else's original work. So this pertains not just to comic book heroes and characters. It applies to original art of every kind. So we want to see your inspiration. We want to see your drawings. We want to see your underpinnings of design then translated into Cookie. I think those are kind of the big rules. Um, that you know, I think most often trip people up. So I just wanted to point those out. Um, let me move back to questions and see if anybody has any questions about that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So let me back up. I think there are a few here. Okay, Jackie has one. Can you clarify what has to be written up about the process process of your entry for the judges? Okay, I can, and also when you go to the website, you'll see a link. It's kind of faint, but it, um, you'll see references to an entry form on the rules page. It's a link, so I click on that and download that because there are some demographic stuff we collect on entrance just to understand who's entering the show, but it also spells out some, it has areas for you to enter all that stuff, and you want to bring that entry form in with you. So I believe there's a section that will ask you how, um, the how you interpreted the theme so the themes in our national holidays um why did you choose the elements you chose why were they important to you what story did they tell to you that's the kind of stuff we want to hear there um the other area that you're going to have to write up information is a description of the techniques you used i especially encourage you some are going to be obvious to the judges some are going to be less so if any are less so you know make sure you spell those out and you know describe what is unique about your process uh, in addition if you've used any materials that you think we would construe as inedible but aren't those are important things to point out for instance you know the luster dust fall into that category some are non-toxic but not edible others are fda approved so if you've used one of the latter you know, say, hey, I've used a luster dust here, but it's XYZ brand, it's FDA approved, it's okay. You know, that helps us because we're not going to know, we're not going to have your bottle in front of us. We are t taking people on their word, but we would appreciate that kind of word to be in those comments. We also require a minimum of three work in process pictures. This is for both 2D and 3D. If you want to give us more, that's great. We like to see how you put stuff together, and we want you to take pictures of things that are, again, um, not all the same thing over and over, but rather unique aspects, excuse me, of your projects. For 3D, one of the um, photos should ideally encompass the cookies as they are not constructed, so we can easily see how many pieces went into the project, and in fact, you'll be asked to tell us how many pieces went in, how many pieces went into it, and then, you know, various stages of work progression are always helpful. If there's any concern you think about judges thinking you have internal supports in your project, because we're not, we're not going to deconstruct them, well, uh, we do ask you to show internal photos of how they were put together. So, you know, just span the process and you're probably going to be with your photos and you'll probably be in pretty good shape. Let's see. Let's see what other questions we have. I hope that answered that, Jackie. Moving up. Okay, so Kristen has another one. What about lighting? Can you add lighting to the design? Example, lights inside windows or something like that. I would assume that's an edible, so a no, but want to check. I would say, um, yeah, it's inedible. And so if it's deeply entrenched inside the project and something that can't be removed, you'll probably get a ding for it. You'll get a point deduction. Uh, however, we had one year, one of the winners had a light on our project and it was at the very top of a marquee detachable from the back, you know, so mm, there, are, there are exceptions, but she did follow the rule of not having it deeply embedded in the project in such a way that it could be chomped on if someone were to eat it. 
So that's, that's your call. There are other ways to achieve that effect through different mediums. Um, that's also something to explore. I, I think I, I should pause here. I think sometimes having these constraints is really, really great. People, last year we had, um, last year the theme was music and broadways. Gosh, I'm already forgetting and the competition just ended. Which, you know, posed challenges for people because the immediate um, inclination is to go to a playbill and copy the front of a playbill. I got many, many questions about that. I'm like, well, that's copyrighted material. We don't really want you doing a literal interpretation of someone's playbill. So people were initially a little bit frustrated with that, perhaps, but they went back to the drawing board, really thought through, you know, why the experience of this play or whatever production they were going to convey was important to them, and then ended up expressing more of a story about that as opposed to a literal interpretation. That gets back to my point about what sets an entry apart. We really love to see people expressing themselves through their pieces. I mean, after all, like with cookies and cakes and with sweets in general, it's not just what they look like. It's, it's, what, it's what they convey to the people receiving them. So for this competition, that sentiment, that theme interpretation, that's what does this piece mean to you? It's really important to us. Okay, great questions, guys. We've got, we've got some really good questions. Okay, Jackie said, yes, thanks, that helped. Okay, don't see any... Oh. Oh, Kristen, good. Love your questions. Do you have to be... Do you have to be... Do you have to be in the photos as well, or just the stages? If, you, if by you, you mean yourself, you do not... You, you should not appear in the photos. Um, we judge the entries blind, as I said, which means we can't know the identity of the person who made it. I mean, we could, but we don't like to. It introduces bias into the process. You probably get a ding and a point deduction for identifying yourself in any of your written materials. Um, your name will be put on one part of the form, but that form, part of the form gets separated off and goes to me as the competition administrator. All the stuff bundled in your little folder that's going to go with your entry, it'll just have a number on it. So it shouldn't have your name, it shouldn't have your business name, it shouldn't have your phone number, it shouldn't have photos of you. So, um, so yeah, I just want to make that, that clear. Okay. Um, are there photos from previous years to look at for reference? Renee, this is my first time I have no um, idea what to expect. Um, actually, yeah, because I ran the competition online last year I posted the winners online. I don't post all of the entries and I don't post the work in process photos of people. I feel like that's kind of their private process and you know, part of their differential advantage might be how they put something together. So I don't really like to share the inner workings of their work in process photos. However, I did share finished results. So if you go to my site, Cookie Connection, and look under the blog, there's a section called Julia Usher's Cookie Art Competition. If you go into that category of the blog, you'll scroll down a few entries and then you'll see the post of last year's winners. If you scroll down to about the same time the year prior, you'll see the post of the winners prior. So you can see what they did. And again, and just bear in mind, these are the people winning, so they're going to be some of the um, better entries. We do have a spectrum of people of all skill levels um, coming into the competition. And um, so, so there's a, just a wider range. Um, than, of course, what I'm presenting in those blog posts. But that might be a good place to start. I would just say don't let it discourage you or intimidate you in any way if you're just starting out. Okay. Let's see if I've got more questions. Okay, so Kyla has some good points. Kyla, as a reminder to everybody watching, is the organizer of That Takes the Cake Show, which is our host show. And she's a wonderful woman. She said this also um, applies to stalking the judges while judging your pieces. Okay, so this comment relates to um, us judging blind and not knowing who the entrants are. So you can't be hovering around as we're judging your piece. That's kind of a dead, a dead giveaway. Um, one year we had... Um, another competition, somebody interviewing somebody about their piece right in front of us. So I had to like, you know, hightail it over to the person doing the interview and ask them to move until we were done with the judging. We do take that um, really seriously. Again, the reason for that is just to make sure the process is as fair as possible. Human beings that we are, we sometimes 
um, bring preconceived notions of other people's work to the table with us. And it's best we don't bring any of that to the table as we're judging. So thank you, Kyla. I think Kyla has a couple other remarks. So I'm going to scroll down those and um, comment on those. No, that's a continuation of, of um, the previous remark. Kelly has a question. Do all entries have to be the show theme? Yes, they do. Um, this year, both 2D, well, I'm not sure about the other categories at Kyla's competition, but for Cookie, 2D and 3D, they're all under the international holidays theme. So you'll see when you go to the rules um, area, one of the criteria is how well does the piece relate to the theme? Um, does it suggest a story? Is it um, related to the theme? All that kind of stuff. So you're specifically evaluated on a full 10 points in each category, 2D and 3D, goes to interpretation of theme. Oops, what happened here? Oops, I think I, I closed a picture. I didn't mean to delete. Okay, so let's move let's move on to the next slide because I deleted one. That's the problem with this live camera setup I've got. If I click on the wrong thing, the whole broadcast can go crazy. Um, let me see. Yes, yes, for the cookie competition, Kelly, yeah. Everything's themed this year. In the past, we've had different themes for different, for 2D versus 3D, but this year they're both the same. That might be also what you're asking about. Okay, so I, I spent all that time saying that competing wasn't about winning, and it, tru it truly, really isn't. It's about learning. However, we have some awesome prizes, in part because we, I say entirely because we have awesome sponsors. We have a really active cookie community. They're really in it to, in this to promote the cookie arts. They're real fans of cookie artists and they come to the table with very, very generous prizes. I would also say the other thing fueling prizes this year is the fact that we're back in person, and I think everybody's really excited about that. We've had um, a record short period of time to do sponsorship development this year because my previous competition just concluded in December. So I've had um, pretty much, you know, I had Christmas break and New Year's, and I have had about a month to um, go, out, go back and... Uh, to the same sponsors many times and ask them for prizes for this year. So I am particularly grateful that with budgets as tight as they are this year, with the economy as rough as it is this year, that we um, are currently pretty close to $16,000 in prizes. Um, about 7,800 of that is cash. The rest will come in the form of digital coupons. Um, this is how we've distributed awards for several years now. I do want to point out that the award distribution is a little bit different um, at shows in person than how I do it even when I am in person. But we've opted to transmit all prizes digitally. So winners, you will get a certificate and a big hug on the podium at the show. Um, however, it, I will probably wait till I'm back in St. Louis a couple days later and distribute the prizes. They'll all come electronically. Cash will be transmitted electronically. And the prizes themselves, any physical prizes, come, any product prizes, I should say, will come in the form of coupons that you can apply to some of our sponsors' stores. So this uh, makes it easier for me, but honestly, it makes it a lot easier for those receiving the prizes. I remember the days when people would go home trying to figure out how the heck they were going to get on the airplane saddled with like, you know, tons of prizes they hadn't anticipated or finding that they had to ship their prizes back home at expense to them. So I, I find that this is just preferable. It's easier for everybody to um, get um, their prizes where they need to be. Um, Kyla had a comment here. I'm going to post it. For the entries in the cake show, the theme applies only to our showpiece entries and if they choose to enter the special award for the theme. Okay, so that's good to know. Thank you. Um, I will keep that in mind. Okay, no more questions. So uh, anyway, the prizes are impressive. I will say that. And I do want to pause here and run a little slideshow to honor the sponsors uh, that we have on, the, at, have on board so far. There are 15 of them. I'm hoping that these numbers will go up even further as we uh, move closer to the competition. So I'm just going to run this little slideshow that... Thanking all of our sponsors. Whoops, before I do that, let me also point out, we've got another special award of this show. In addition to the 12 winners, three in each category, ideally, um, 
we give out the Best in Show Award each year. And this is in honor of Carrie Vincent, who is my mentor and friend, who passed away a few years ago, but was known uh, most known for running the Oklahoma State Sugar Art Show. I shouldn't say most known. I mean, she was known for so many things. She was an extraordinary cake decorator before she even had the, the show and the competition. I got involved with her there judging the cake competition initially. And then the subsequent year, she asked me to run her, a cookie category within her competition. There really hadn't been one prior to that, and cookies were just taking off. So this was about maybe 10 years ago now that I started with Carrie and that's how my competition came to have my name because she gave it my name. <laughs> I woke up one morning and found that she had posted the name of my competition on the site and I've just carried that uh, with me over the years. It's not an ego thing. It's, it's just that that's what it came to be known um, underneath Carrie's umbrella. So this award goes to uh, Carrie because she shaped me so much and it's really to recognize the one piece across both 2D and 3D that really most impressed the judges and most uh, reminded us of Carrie. You know, Carrie was known for her, her impeccable detail, attention to detail, her precision, uh, her spirit, her emotion, um, the creativity she brought to her pieces. So it's all those criteria kind of bundled together, which is what we're looking for in this one standout piece. And this person gets a little something special from us each year in addition to um, prizes. Um, usually this person is also, of course, this person will have also probably previously placed in one of the 12 spots. Okay, no more questions. So that's Carrie, the Carrie Vincent Best in Show Award. Now thanking those sponsors, I'm going to let this slideshow run a little bit just so you can see who they all are. Um, they come from a spectrum of Providers to the cookie business, BRP Box Shop makes boxes that cookiers often use. Some are our judges, as in Ginger Nears, and Beatrice Mueller, Stephanie, Icing Images, myself. Others are decorators who um, serve our competitors often with generous prizes to their um, cl online classes or in-person classes. Of course, Cookie Countess, Flower Box have numerous products that you guys are all going to love. We've got other competitions. I love this. We are a very Jersey Shore Cake Show. We are a very happy, cohesive community supporting one another in our endeavors. And the Jersey Cake Show is a, an example of that. So at any rate, if you are listening and happen to be someone serving the cookie business and are interested in sponsoring this competition, I encourage you to do so. When this live concludes, there will be a bunch of links underneath it in the post. They might be there now already. I'm not sure how this is posting. Those links will include our 2023 sponsor offering that talks about all the perks that sponsors get um, in, in, um, for, for donating to the competition. Um, there, there are lots of benefits this year because we are in person. And in addition to the usual online benefits and exposure they get, they're going to be getting a lot of on-the-show floor types of benefits from Kyla and her team as well. So I encourage you to look that out if you're interested in furthering the advancement of the state of cookie art, as I like to say. Also in those links beneath this post will be links to the rules and also a link to the reg page on that takes the cake site. The reg page is on a slightly separate page. Read the rules. It'll direct off to the reg page. Then you have to scroll down the reg page, a couple of different categories until you see the cookie category. And that's where you would enter or a register to enter. The physical entry actually takes place at the competition. Um, on that point of registration, though, I will move to the next slide. I do want to encourage people to register early. This is simply going to the site. If you're thinking you're going to enter, pretty sure of it, please do register early. Um, it's, it's, it's relatively inexpensive, but it gives us a really good handle as organizers, a better handle, I should say, on what to expect the day of the competition. Otherwise, we're kind of shooting in the dark in terms of how many people might show up. And we do have to have a certain number of tables to accommodate entries. We have to have tablecloths on those tables. We have to have prize certificates pre-printed. So there's a lot of advanced preparation that goes on behind the scenes that really requires having an early read on the numbers. So if you're pretty sure of it, or if I've kind of boosted you off the fence and you're more sure of it, I hope, after this little conversation today, then, you know, please pop on over there and um, put your name in the hat. And let's see, any questions? 
I'm going to scroll on down, see if there's anything new. Kelly posted a link in here again, again, to the competition registration page. So thank you for that. So let me see what I've got um, left. I think that's all I really wanted to say today. I'm just going to pause on my last slide, which is the one, same one I started with, which is encouraging you to take advantage of this month and a half till showtime to do something creative, to really push yourself, to challenge yourself with new techniques, new mediums, and to come see us because we'd love to see you. It, that's going to be the great thing about this show is just getting back to the in-person format. So I'm going to pause here because I could babble all day and just see if there are any more comments. I really encourage you guys to ask away. This is a good opportunity to do so while I'm here today. And questions, anyone? Okay, it's looking pretty quiet. So I can only assume that means that I've answered the questions really, really well. If I have not, um, then of course you can email me sweetlife at juliausher.com. Oh, thank you, Kyla. Let's, this is a worthy of posting. I was talking about all the things, reasons you might compete. Um, and her comment is maybe learn something about the holidays around the world and other people's cultures and customs. Um, I, I like applaud that. That's really wonderful. One of the thing that, things that's been neat about the online competition is we do get participation from all over the world. And it's off, as a judge, it's really fantastic to see how um, different point, cultural points of view kind of come to express themselves. And, you know, the United States is its own microcosm of um, multiculturalism. So I really... Um, love just seeing how one common theme can really present itself in so many different ways. So yes, I like that point as well. Okay, so no more questions. So I was going to say, um, if you happen to have any after this, of course, email me sweetlife at juliausher.com. Read those rules over um, for sure. And they may spark even more questions. It's not uncommon for that to happen. So, and it's not uncommon for us to sometimes write things ambiguously. So we've already had one rules clarification this year, which was helpful. It came from someone's question. Okay. With that said, I am going to thank Kyla for being here. I'm so glad she was here. I love having a little back and forth dialogue. It's hard talking into a vacuum at myself. So it's really nice having Kyla from the show here as the representative. And... Laura Saperiti, our judge, was also here, too. I'm now scrolling back and finding all of this. And thank you all for the um, very helpful questions. There are many great ones that um, were very, very useful for everyone to hear. So thanks, all. I am going to sign off now and look forward to seeing you at the show. It's very, very soon. Becky said she's so excited to attend my first cake show in the cookie track class. I am so excited to see you. I'm also teaching on the cookie track, so... I've got to start gearing up for that, making my cookies for that. Jackie thanks me for my time. I'm a little bit less nervous. Yes, and that's the thing. I, I just, there shouldn't be too much nerve about it. I, I would just consider it a competition amongst yourself, you know, a personal challenge. You put it out there. The world does see it in this case, but no one knows it's you. It's a numbered entry on a table. So, you know, take all the fear out of it. Oh, Kelly is also one of our organizers. Thank you, Kelly. That explains why you have awesome questions and comments and links. Thank you. Okay. Well, I am babbling away now, so I'm going to sign off, and I'm going to see you all in Texas in a matter of a month. Till then, live sweet, sweetly, guys. Bye-bye.